Welcome to the Fairfax Sports Report. I'm your host, DJ Kubaroulis, along with my co-host, Paul Frommel. We have a very special Eagles episode here uh, for you on the Fairfax Sports Report. We're joined, of course, by Coach Vaughn Lewis uh, from Edison, Ben Barber, uh, a wide receiver from Edison, and Sean Lloyd, the quarterback from Edison High School. The Edison Eagles with a 23 defeat over the deep run team from the uh, eastern region, I believe, Coach, or the central region uh, from lower in the state. Uh, and they took them out this week to get to the next level in the state tournament, which is the state final. We're going to ask them all about what they've been able to accomplish this postseason during the regular season as well. Uh, we're going to let you know all about their stats, where they're interested in going to college. We're going to talk a little bit uh, with Coach Lewis about the good old days as well. Before we do that, uh, we want to thank the folks that make this show possible. Of course, we're talking about our underwriters. CCI Screen Printing, for all your screen printing needs, 703-978-0257. And Quality Care Ford Service Center, servicing all makes and models, 703-383-6299. First of all, guys, congratulations on, on the victory this past week. Uh, Coach, you put it pretty simply to me earlier in the week. You said it was a pretty good win for us. It was a great <laughs> win for us. Kids played extremely hard on both sides of the ball. You know, I, I couldn't ask any any better effort than they gave us this last week. Well, Coach, you guys have, have put together a, an impressive season. Your regular season, you guys finished at 8-2. and two. You were co-champions of the National. Um, Edison beat uh, Yorktown 27-7 in the first round of the region. Uh, you guys took out Stonebridge 31-17 in the region finals. We're going to talk all about that game. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, the state semifinals, of course, we just mentioned, 20-3. Uh, you guys have just been flying here uh, through the postseason. Anything that you guys have been doing different? No, we just focus on the little things. We believe that if you take care of the little things, then the game will take care of itself. Our defense has really stepped it up, and they've been playing extremely well. Uh, we've limit, limited to most of the teams lately to the lowest scores of the year, and we're just looking for an exciting game coming up this week. We're going to get a chance to preview that game for you folks at home watching the Fairfax Sports Report. We're going to show you the stats uh, of these two premier players here in the northern region. Uh, Coach, before we get any further, you guys have been kind of the sweetheart now for, for, for three years. <laughs> i got to put you on the spot. I mean, three years you guys got there. What put you over the top in the region final against Stonebridge this year? I, I think it was our defense, to be honest with you. They, uh, Stonebridge had an extremely powerful offense, and we were able to control them defensively. And then our offense, these two young men right here in our running game, really came alive, and we took advantage of some, of some miskeys that they had had. Now, Coach, the, the mental aspect of playing a team like Stonebridge, who is undefeated, how did you get your kids pumped up and believing that they could win? Well, this team, that's one thing this team has done all year long, is they, they thought that they could win. Mm -hmm. And every week we've just gotten better and better. And, you know, we played them last year and lost by eight points. Mm -hmm. And we, we were determined this year we were going to go back over there and we were going to come back with the trophy this year. So, Sean, was, was, was it... Pretty much revenge time when you guys played Stonebridge. <laughs> were, you, were you looking to, to take them out this time? Um, mm -hmm. I don't look at it as a re revenge aspect, uh -huh. a part about it, but I looked at it as, you know, last year I wasn't as smart as a, a quarterback uh -huh. as, I w as I am this year. Mm -hmm. um, I had a real, I had a talented team around me last year, mm -hmm. but as the team chemistry of this year's team and last year's team, this year's team's ke team chemistry was a, t a hundred times better mm -hmm. and I think that's what made the difference in this ball game this year you know we focused on the little things like coach Lewis said and we came out with a W and speaking of that and, and you've been a guy that's been focusing all year we want to get a chance to show you folks um, Sean's numbers Sean has put up some pretty impressive numbers um, this year uh, as a quarterback at Edison High School heading into the state final um, Sean has as you can see here uh, he's got 166 completions out of 323 attempts um, 20, over 2,500 yards and 22 touchdowns, uh, 12 picks. He'll, he'll beat me up for putting that on there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's also quite the runner, as you can see, 116 carries, uh, uh, just about 260 yards and six touchdowns. Every time he touches the ball and takes off for a run, um, over four and a half uh, yards, Sean. Coach, I ask you what it's like to have a, a quarterback that is so diverse, that can throw, and can also run. Well, Sean's been the secret to our success this year. Uh, last year we had a predominantly running attack, and Sean had 2,000 yards last year also, but it was all because play action passes. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, you know, our big fullback graduated and our tailback graduated, 
And so we put the pressure on Sean this year and Ben, our wide receivers, and we said, okay, this year we're going we're to throw the ball to help set up the run. And because of that, Sean has, has, has really developed our team. I mean, he's come out and made some great decisions. And he's, he's you know, if you, if you look at our stats, Ben's not the only one catching balls. Right. Mm -hmm. Sean does a great job of throwing to the backs, uh, throwing the Drew. I mean, he just spreads the ball around, which makes it really tough on the defense. He's and then when they're trying easy. to defend, <laughs> <laughs> we can actually uh, oh, okay. we, can, we actually have a, a, a graphic we can put up there to show uh -huh. all the receivers that Sean's been throwing okay. to. If you will put that up there, show all these wide receivers here. And ben, we're going to ask you about these guys too because you're out there on the field <laughs> with them. Let's go ahead. I'll, I'll read some of these. Out. We got Ben Barber, obviously with 47 catches, 100, 896 yards, 11 touchdowns, averaging 19 yards per catch. Drew Baldwin with 47 catches, also 569 yards, one touchdown. Mikey Roden, Mike Roden, 32 yard, 32 catches, 603 yards, five touchdowns. Kevin Carter with 15 catches, 223 yards, five touchdowns. Kendall Wallace, 11 catches, 198 yards, one touchdown. So, so Ben, what's it like leading a, a re receiver core like like the one you have over at Edison? Oh, it all starts in the off season, you know, uh -huh. coming after school and working out, preparing for what the season has to bring to us, and we have great coaches put us in the right spots, show us the right techniques and what to do on the field. And as a unit, we come together as one every game mm -hmm. and every practice. We say we got to put our best effort toward everything that we do. And I think it shows during the games. Now, Sean, you know, having receivers like this, you must be like a little kid at Christmas <laughs> looking at all, all, these rece all this talent you have in your receiver core. Talk a little bit about, about Ben and his receiver core. The receiver core, they make me look real good. <laughs> um, They've bailed me out a couple of situations, a couple of bad passes. Um, you know, Ben, he goes up and gets it. Drew probably runs probably the best precise routes I've seen mm -hmm. in the northern region. And then Mike, Mike's that third wide receiver that you really don't hear about. But, you know, you look at the stats and you're like, wow, you know, this kid <laughs> almost has 600 yards receiving. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of those, he's a stat grabber, but he's a silent stat grabber. And Averaging 18.8 yards. Yeah. What's it like kind of being like that? I mean, you know, not maybe getting the headlines, maybe not necessarily being the, the, the big time mm -hmm. team, the, the stone bridge, like, you know, they're written about every week. And you guys, you know, you've been there three times now in the Northern Region Final. You would think that you guys maybe would get, do you, do you play the underdog role a lot? Do you guys feel like the underdog at times? Mm -hmm. we, we, play the, we play the underdog role, but we know in our minds and our hearts that we're not the underdog, you know. We don't like to we don't like to you know look past the team, right. but you know we do feel you know sometimes we can we're better than a team and we don't get enough criticism mm -hmm. or credit, mm -hmm. and I feel that this year's team stepped up really well about that you know we haven't been ranked at all, mm -hmm. we haven't got no credibility, right. but yet week in and week out we've defeated two mm -hmm. undefeated teams in a row. Absolutely, we're gonna get a chance to show the folks at home the stats on those guys, the big dogs <laughs> coming in against you guys. You guys have really been giant killers. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, your future as well. You know, we, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, who's looking at you, where you're headed in the future. Sean, I know, also has a, a bright future. Um, what does the future hold for you as a, as a receiver at the next level? Yeah, I'm looking strongly into going to college and maybe playing in the professional, professionally. Maryland is a great choice right now, and I also have UVA looking at me. I have letters coming from East Carolina, Penn State, mm. Boston College. But right now, Maryland is a strong possibility. I'm not committing to anybody yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you to do it on this show before the show <laughs> we're off here. Sean, uh, you're obviously a big part uh, of his recruitment. Obviously, you know, recruiting is, is stats and people looking at numbers and, and that sort of thing. You have a bright future as well, uh, headed to junior college and, and possibly going to head to Norfolk State. Talk a little bit about your future and your expectations. Um, you know, next year I'm just going to take a year and again, myself developed into a college program. Um, take that year to develop as a smarter, faster, stronger player, and then transfer on to a bigger school and try to bring success. You know, my first choice is to get education, because you know, this the really the reality of me going pro. You know, is very slim. There's that small window, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's good to have dreams. Mm -hmm. I dream about it, but you know, get the education, have something to fall back on too. Speaking of dreams, Coach, it seems like 
a long time ago. Well, 20 years to be exact. And you guys, you got your ring with you from that I, championship. I do have my ring that there. championship. <laughs> got to uh, that. <laughs> go ahead and flash that up on the screen for us. That is what is a it? state championship uh, <laughs> ring looks like right there. That is from 1986 uh, when you guys first beat Potomac in the semis uh, and then took out Warwick. Um, with a 14 to 13 victory, also some uh, assistant coaches from that squad. Correct, Coach Deck, our defensive coordinator, was our fullback at the time, and and he kind of actually won the uh, the semifinal game for us because we were playing and went into overtime. Mm -hmm. In high school, we put the ball on the 10 yard line, and our first play was a dive, and we blocked it extremely well. And he ran over their free safety and put him out of the game. Wow. He was also <laughs> their starting running back. Wow. So four plays later, they had fourth and goal from about the four and didn't make it. So in a way, Sherman won the state championship. He, he won it for you a couple yeah. of ways there. All right, Coach, we want to talk about the upcoming game. But before we get there, uh, we want to talk a little bit about your defense because you said that this is – obviously your offensive right. guys don't want to hear that just yet. But <laughs> your defense has been a very big part of what you guys have been able to do this year. We've got a graphic. We want to show what you guys have been able – or excuse me, what your defense – Defensive guys have been able to do uh, this year. Uh, Steven uh, Robertson uh, and James Pratt, Drew Baldwin. There's some names that uh, might ring a bell. Um, here's some stats, as you can see. 141 total tackles, uh, three uh, forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, two sacks and three INTs uh, for Steven. Uh, James, not far behind, four sacks, forced fumble, 111 total tackles, and, and Drew Baldwin right in there with 100 total tackles, six Interceptions, coach. interceptions, six interceptions and two forced fumbles. You just look at those statistics, and and you know you've been preaching defense, but I mean that that just shows it right there, coach. Talk a little bit about defensively what you guys have been able to do to teams. Well, our defense has come a long way this year. We we struggled early defensively against Lee against the run. Uh, we had two returning starters from our defense, and uh, James Pratt was one of them. And James has done an amazing job for us. He, we run a 50 defense, and he, we give him both A gaps. And he's a second leading tackler on our team, from, and he gets double teamed wow. frequently. Wow. And Stefan Robertson is a sophomore, and he, um, he didn't even start the first three games for us. Hmm. And he's come on the last games. He's, he's our leading tackler on the team sophomore. right now as a sophomore. Wow. He has great instincts. <laughs> oh, he has great instincts. He's tough, coachable. And, and so our defense has just come a long way. And people ask me all the time the similarity between this year's team right. and our team in 86. And the biggest similarity is we had good defenses in both. Um, and so, you know, you can't, you can't win on any level without a strong defense. And so we're extremely pleased the way it's come together the last, last six ball games. We played really well defensively. And, and you can also see that the, the, the teams that they're going against, that Edison's going against, definitely no slouches. You know, Edison, um, Yorktown, Stonebridge, Deep Run, these are established programs. And we have a graphic up here. You see York the opponent, Yorktown. Their offensive average is 32.7 points per game. Edison allowed seven. Stonebridge, 40, they're aver they were averaging 43 points per game coming in. 17 points for Stonebridge. Deep Run, 29.75 points per game. Edison, allows three. Overall, Edison beat, the, beat their three playoff opponents by a total of 51 points, allowed a little over eight points per game. Wow. So definitely, defense has really stepped up. But offense, 78, touch, 78 points scored in those three games. So right. it's a good balance for both coaches. It, it's a great balance. Um, the, the first time we played Yorktown, uh, they beat us. And the reason they beat us was because they had ball the whole second half. Mm -hmm. I think we had the ball maybe... 12 plays the whole second half. And they were, you know, they'd run three yards here, four yards there, five yards there. And our offense can score a lot of points, but they can't score points unless we give them the ball back. The ball, right? <laughs> and so That's we true. weren't able to do that against Yorktown the first game. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went forward on fourth and short two or three times the first game, and we couldn't stop them. Mm -hmm. The second time we played them, we kept giving the ball back to our offense because mm -hmm. they went forward on third and fourth down frequently on fourth and short, mm -hmm. and we held them every time. So the difference between those two games was not our offense because they were consistent in both. Mm -hmm. The difference was the defense gave the ball back to our offense. What's it like being on the offensive side of the ball knowing that you're going to get another shot? No matter what, you're always going to get another shot to get out there and, and, and put up some, some good numbers and help your team to get the W. What's that like knowing that? You want to answer this one? <laughs> <laughs> you 
people. Put him on the spot. <laughs> 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 questions. <laughs> well, like Coach Lewis said, the defense has come a long way. And as an offense, we, we put our defense out there after we score the points, mm -hmm. put them out there knowing that they're good and they can stop anybody if they wanted to. And when they do that, we're on the sideline cheering them on, and that gives them pumped up to stop the, def to stop the offense on their save, and that gives us the ball back in great position to put points on the board. All right, now I'm going to really put you on the hot seat. <laughs> We've got uh, a preview coming up of the Phoebus game. We want to get a chance to ask you, Coach, and you guys okay. what you expect in that game. But I want to put you on the hot seat real quick. Sean, who is the smelliest guy on the team locker room-wise after games? <laughs> <laughs> um, Better pick somebody small. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably James Pratt. Um, he's probably going to beat me up when he, when he, when he <laughs> sees it. But, you know, me and James, we have a good relationship, joke around. Uh, you know, nobody really has bad hygiene on the team, so I'm not going to put nobody out. He's got, he's got four sacks. He's probably going to look for a couple more. <laughs> yeah, he's probably, probably, probably going to get me in pregame one day. Uh, he, uh, he also starts offense for us, too, uh, so maybe he, that's he no might, reason. No look block. <laughs> yeah, he might. Yeah. <laughs> you look out, block. Turn around, look out. <laughs> All right, what is in your CD player right now? I know I'm old school saying CD player. You probably have an MP3 player, but mm -hmm. what's the number one track you're listening to before games? Oh, Jay-Z, show me what you got. Okay. <laughs> All right, I like that. I like that. All right, guys, we're going to show you what we got right now on the upcoming game. Phoebus uh, is going to be the next up for the Giant Killers. Uh, you see Phoebus is a school from Hampton. Uh, overall record, 12-1. and one. PowerPoint total to end the regular season. The PowerPoints, of course, are what determine who makes the playoffs. The PowerPoint total was a 27.6. Peninsula District Champion, and Division 5 Eastern Region Champion. And you see her schedule here, Coach, and you see who they've played, what they've done, and how many points they've forced down there at the bottom. 29 points a game. You guys have seen that before coming into this one. Uh, and you see how many points they've allowed. Just about 12 and a half, so a pretty stout defense. The only loss was to Hampton. Hampton, of course, has won, I believe it's now 14 state championships, um, and, and they're quite the team. So, But Hampton kind of taken out, and maybe the road has been cleared a little bit. No one will ever say that you guys had an easy road, though, <laughs> looking at these numbers. But we look at their road and, and who they've been through down there in their region. Of course, uh, you see they put up uh, quite a few points uh, against Denby, uh, a local rival of theirs, and you see Menchville, another 35 points. Looks like they have the ability to put up points. They barely got by Potomac, though, Coach, 31-28. Uh, and and I, I've got to ask you, you know, Chantilly is a Division VI team. They're the team uh, that is going to be playing Osborne in the Division VI state final. We'll talk a little bit about them later in the show. They're playing up here. You guys are traveling pretty far away, though, down, down to basically their backyard. What's that going to be like? Well, I think the biggest problem is we tend not to handle change real well. And so we're going to be down and it's been, we're going to leave Friday. We're going to go down to William and Mary and we've got to uh, work out on their field. They've given us permission to come on their field and do a pregame. Then we'll go out and get something to eat and then we'll spend the night in a hotel. And, you know, that's, <laughs> as a coach, that makes me a little yeah. nervous. Cause, you know, when they're home in their own bed, sleeping's one thing. But when they're at a, at a hotel 150 miles away hmm. with their best friends right. and, you know, no parents around saying go to bed. You know, that, that makes me more nervous than anything else. Not that they'll do anything bad, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just a little worried about anybody, someone might get three hours sleep instead of Assistant seven. coaches turned into parents in the that's, hallway. That, right? that, that, that's kind of always scary. Just, have, just, just go ahead and make sure you have these two sleeping in your room. <laughs> <be fine. laughs> well, you know, we're, I'm excited for the, for the players because last time that we played in 86, we played Potomac, which is right. in Dumfries. And then we played Warwick at, at Woodson. Mm -hmm. So our furthest trip was to Dumfries. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, this seems more special because, right. you know, we're going to go out and we're going to spend the night and everything's, you know, picked up, paid for the young men. And so I, it's a great experience for them. It makes me a little nervous because it's change. And change is not always good. <laughs> and speaking of change, it's a change in opponent. Have you seen tape? Uh, on yes, them? we exchanged three game films on them. Um, you know, they're big, they're fast. They're physical. Um, they're well coached. Um, they're, they're a good football team. You know, we, you know, they played Potomac, and I, was, you know, you said you know they had a tough time with Potomac, but Potomac was an awful good football team too. You know, they they barely lost the. I mean, they crushed Colonial Forge in a game, in their semifinal game. So, you know, we're expecting great things. I tell you, we tell our kids all the time, you know, respect everyone, fear no one, mm -hmm. and we've gone into that 
and, and they've done that. I mean, they've, you know, no one thought that we could beat Stonebridge. Right. And yet we came out there and we played a great ball game. Yep. Nobody thought we'd be deep run, mm. and these young men went down there, and we played a great ball game. You know, so we're we're excited. Ben, how long did uh, did Coach uh, let you celebrate your win over Deep Run, and then <laughs> before you had start focusing on your next opponent? Oh, <laughs> short lived. <Not> really. <laughs> <laughs> I think <it's> Sunday, <laughs> and then back to films on Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what have you seen? I mean, Coach, obviously you're going to scheme them up, but what have you guys seen? I mean, you got to be pretty good at this film thing now. Um. You just pick up on tendencies that the coaches talk about, weaknesses in the defense. Um, you know, like Coach said, they're fast, big, strong, and they like they like to play like that. They like to pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. Um, they're secondary. They, you know, they have a lot of confidence in themselves. You know, they like to play a little bit of man, cover three. You know, just knowing your coverages helps you a lot on watching films because you're easy. You're a bit, well. You're available to be yeah. able to pick out, you know, certain coverages and how defenses are, what their tendencies are. And, you know, that's how me and Ben get on our same page, you know. Right. Ben, you know, if you see this, this is what they're going to do. Um, and, you know, we know what to expect. And just the main thing is, you know, keeping your composure out there, you know, per partly me because, you know, I'm, I'm hot-headed because I'm a competitor. I like to win. I'm glad you're over there then. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. We just got to keep, keep our composure and do the right things. And I feel we can come out with a W, but it's not going to be easy, you know. Fan, the Phoebus Phantoms are a good team, so we'll see. Well, guys, you heard it here. Um, Phoebus and Edison in the state final, Division Five, uh, down in Hampton. Uh, of course, we're joined by uh, Sean Lloyd, quarterback of Edison. Uh, also, Ben Barber, our wide receiver at Edison, and Coach Vaughn Lewis. Uh, won a state title with Edison in 1986. We certainly appreciate you guys coming all the way out here and, and, and coming on with us, and we wish you the best of luck uh, throughout the year. The Fairfax Sports Network uh, is unbiased as to their <laughs> teams, but now that you guys are going up against the rest of the state, uh, we're definitely behind you full force. Yeah, Coach, that, that <laughs> ring looks a little lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to get another one. <laughs> well, hey, I'll give you the final word, Coach. Final word is well, we appreciate all Northern Virginia support. I, I've gotten... I've gotten emails from California, from Texas, all over just to, to support the Eagles. And I'm just, it makes us happy. Makes really glad for these young men who, who brought the pride back to Edison High School. The pride is back at Edison High School. Guys, we're going to break for a, for a moment. Stay with the Fairfax Sports Report. We've got Coach Mike Lolly from Chantilly going to be on the phone with us a little bit later to tell us about his controversy. Now, who do you start? <laughs> you won without your starting quarterback. We're going to ask Coach Lolly, or excuse me, Coach Lolly, um, all about that, and we're going to uh, give you uh, some more updates on the rest of the teams uh, coming up. We might talk a little bit of hoops. Uh, come back and join us here on the Fairfax Sports Network. Welcome back to the Fairfax Sports Report. I'm BJ Kubaroulis of the Connection Newspapers alongside of Paul Frommelt, also of the Connection Newspapers. Want to thank uh, Coach Vaughn Lewis and quarterback Sean Lloyd and wide receiver Ben Barber for coming on and talking about the Eagles' dream season, Paul. Uh, they could make some history over there. Edison, two state titles in 20 years at uh, the Division V level. Last state championship for them was 1986. We saw Coach Vaughn Lewis's <laughs> yeah. ring. Wow, that thing very, was very pretty, nice ring. pretty flashy. I mean, if, if you're beating someone like Yorktown, you're beating someone like Stonebridge, you're beating someone like Deep Run, they have a legitimate shot at taking home the state title. I mean, no one, I, I mean, I'm, myself included, thought they had a chance against Stonebridge, right. and they crushed Stonebridge. So definitely, Coach Lewis definitely has a shot for another state title. Get himself a, another <laughs> ring there. As they, the youngins these days like to call it the bling, Paul. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> We're going to move on uh, to another contender, another team that has a legitimate shot at possibly getting Coach Mike Lolly his first ring. Uh, Coach Lolly played at Notre Dame, uh, but we'll be getting, if, if they can pull it off uh, up here against Osborne, they could get a state championship ring. Mm -hmm. And just two seasons after posting an 0-10 record, Paul, you and I were both – uh, at the uh, state semifinal game at Chantilly versus Verina. Verina mm -hmm. came into this game with six Division I uh, recruits, and, and you could tell just by looking at that mm -hmm. side of the field that these were some big boys. They were big and they were athletic. They could hit you, they could run, 
And it, it, at first, it looked like it was going to be a problem for the Chargers. But obviously, when, when, you, when you have someone like Zach Howley on the line, someone like Antonio Cross running the ball, these people will hit you in the mouth. And it, it's going to make these big athletic kids pause for a second. And that's what Chantilly did. We want to get a chance to show you folks at home who didn't see the Fairfax Sports Network's Game of the Week. We're going to show you some highlights from that game. You can also get that game on Cox On Demand. Uh, it'll be available for two weeks. And then you can get that game on, on replays, um, mm -hmm. of course. But uh, let's show you some of the recaps from this game, Paul. Here's Justin Thorpe, the big quarterback for Vrana going back. He made some stuff happen because of his quickness, but you, as you see, the that defensive line chasing Thorpe down. Chantilly successful in the purple. You mentioned Antonio Cross. Here's a guy going up the middle. Why did they go up the middle so many times? Well, those big defensive ends for Verina were really giving the option some problems. So they went right up the middle with Cross, 25 carries, 153 yards. As you'll see, them just, just decking Austin Decker. But there you go. We have some like Torian Pace, the change of pace running back. Obviously, he's going to make some people miss and get a big plus there. There's Decker dropping back, nearly picked. He did have two picks in this game. Junior started in the state semifinals after uh, the starter, Warwick, went down. As you see here, here's, here's uh, Posiak getting the fumble and returning it for a touchdown. One of Chantilly defense's two scores in the game. That was for the 7-0 lead. Zach Halley batting down a pass. He was the Fairfax Sports Network player of the game. There's the pass over the top, and you see the blanket defense. You, you see the defensive Line and the DBs really making stuff happen here. As you see, Austin Morris getting an interception there. All phase of the Chantilly defense was clicking against Verina. Austin Morris, first team all region selection, even though missing four games, almost four games this year. There's the pitch out, Paul. It's a pace from Decker, but they had trouble yeah, with that. Yeah, barely, they barely got it that time. I think they fumbled it twice in the second half on that pitch out, because Decker is, is just getting knocked, as you see right there, and that's what was happening. That's why they went to, as I call him, meet Antonio Cross up the middle. Obviously, he, he did well for him. There's Decker with the pump fake, but he just can't seem to find anything, so he makes a smart decision. He pulls it down and, and just takes the tackle. You see him roll out here. Uh, I think he made some good decisions. This, of course, was not uh -huh. one of them as he throws the pick, one of his two picks. Uh, there's the handoff and, of course, some yeah. fumbling issues. Uh, but they still got it done, Paul, and that's because of defense. He definitely, their defense really carried in this game, scoring more points than Verina's, sco uh, Verina's offense scored. Morris was definitely having a hard time. You see here, chasing down the quarterback. Their de I mean, big athletic kids, but their defense went out and got him, swarming him. This was right before the half. They were trying to find something Verina was. They were trying to find any sort of daylight. And you just see, this is a perfect example of what the Chantilly defense has done this year. They've just They've just been everywhere. Paul. Thorpe is going to make one person miss, but there's two more right after him. Here you see uh, Decker getting to Danny Sims. Sims, obviously, with Decker not being the wide receiver, the key tight end wide receiver for the Chargers. Here's Decker again, trying to make something happen right before the half, and he gets picked off again. Uh, un unfortunately, they were trying to go up to, to go up 17 nothing in the half, but had to settle for you know 10 nothing. Chantilly kind of got away with one right here, Paul. Definitely. Uh, Verona went for a pooch kick. Chantilly, it, it hit right where there was no Chantilly players, but Chantilly recovered it and was able to start. And here they are right here. But again, that pitch, that outside pitch, just wasn't working for the Chargers during the game. And if you're looking at these clips, you're probably thinking, boy, how many points did Chantilly lose by? But no, their defense ball was, mm -hmm. I mean, look, we've seen Verona look good at times, but this is probably their biggest, one of their biggest, besides a circus catch, one of their biggest offensive plays. Here it is right here. Here's the, here's the touchdown by Thorpe. The only touchdown, obviously an athletic kid, you've seen right. a Michael Vick type move there. But that's the only points that Verona was able to put on the board. They had one good drive. You see here, Cross just, barreling through and knocking off of all these would-be tacklers and making his biggest game, gain of the game. They call him Meat over there at Chantilly yeah. for a reason. And in late points in the fourth quarter, uh, as you see Decker here taking just, the sack. Just the young quarterback had a tough game, but he got the W. So we'll see. Warwick will be healthy next game, so we'll see what happens. Lolly has said that if Warwick is cleared, Warwick will play. We're going to get a chance to talk to Coach Lolly about that decision to start if he will start Nate Warwick for this game. You see another pitch back there. The it's problems just, were there all day with that. The option the option offense is a tough offense to run, and Decker runs it well. But when, when you have a defense like Verina, it's going to spoil you a little bit. Big hit there. Here you see Posiak just laying down a big hit. Again, every part of the Chantilly defense was clicking. They were hitting hard. They were running to the ball. It really worked. There, here is an interception here by Chris Colta. Makes a man miss, takes the house for Chantilly's second score 
of the game. Chantilly's offense only scored three points on the day, Paul. 14 of those 17 points that they scored uh, came mm -hmm. from, excuse me, 12 of those 17 points came from their defense. He's Here's a, circus a great move that happened twice in this quarter. Great athletes in Verina. And Verina, Verina just seemed to be a little bit undisciplined at times. They kind of shot themselves in mm -hmm. the foot. Uh, Chantilly certainly defensively locked down on them and made them look like they weren't, they, they, like they didn't have the athletic kids that they truly did. As Here's where the sacks happened. Zach Howe leading the charge. Verina trying to get back in the game went to the air, but Thorpe was sacked repeatedly, and then Chantilly got the ball, and you know what they're gonna do? Meet right up That's the right. middle. It's meet time. That's what I wanted to mention as you see the celebration. As you here. see the purple platoon rush onto the field. Definitely a big day for Chant Lally said he mentioned the 0-10 the season as everybody does. And he said, even during the 0-10 season, they were they went to, to Centerville in the pouring rain and the purple platoon, that's what the fans right. are called, they were there cheering. He said they the, the Chantilly fans deserve a good team, and they're getting a good team, and they are going to pack Freedom this weekend. And, Paul, you mentioned that it's going to be at Freedom of Woodbridge. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that's a change because, as we mentioned earlier in the show, when we had the Edison Eagles on. The, of course, they'd like to have their game mm -hmm. moved up here. But uh, since both teams and Chantilly will be taking on Osborne uh, in the state final, since both teams are from the northern region, that game has been moved to Freedom of Woodbridge. Uh, it's a 1.30 start for all you Northern well, Region fans out there. They actually, uh, South County said that they would host the game, and Chantilly obviously liked that idea, but uh, it didn't pass. Both teams had, had to agree, and what, when both teams couldn't agree, it was either freedom or stay down in Hampton. Right. They went with freedom, obviously a better drive. But this game was almost at South County. We're going to get a chance to talk to Coach Mike Lolly here in just a minute. Paul, before we do that, I'd like to get your thoughts on the Chantilly, uh, Chantilly's last game. You were at the game. You mm -hmm. were on the sidelines. Give us the feel of the sidelines during that game. Well, the side, definitely any time the offense had the ball, there was nervousness. When they were lead, the first drive the offense had the ball, they scored a field goal. So everybody was, was extremely excited about that fact. You know, they're going to you know, score on every drive. But, I mean... Austin Decker had a very tough game, obviously, and so when, especially during in the, in the right before the second half, when uh, they're, they're looking to go up and by uh, seven by 17 points, tries to force it, throws that interception in the end zone. But it was the defense. You never thought that Verina was going to score. Right. You never saw them threatening. There was never a sense of dread on that sideline because you knew the defense would pick it up, the defense would get a fumble for a touchdown, the defense would get some interceptions. So, I mean, with a defense like that, a team is never scared. And, and, and we had Austin Decker on, on this show with us before that game mm -hmm. and with Coach Lolly. For those of you who are fans of the show, you saw him with us last week. The, the guy has a swagger about him. Mm -hmm. I think he did an incredible job. He looked, it looked like a rough game for him. But I still think that he facilitated the offense well. I think that you saw their athleticism on the other side of the ball come through. I want to get a chance to ask Coach Lolly about what he thought about what Austin and a couple of his players were able to do in the state semifinals. Coach, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us. We're joined by Coach Mike Lolly of the Chantilly Chargers. Uh, Coach Lolly, you're headed in to the state finals uh, coming up, a local game as we'll get a chance to talk about. Uh, in a little bit, but before we move on to the future here, let's talk a little bit about what you guys were able to accomplish. We just looked at some film here and some some replays, and and looking at those replays, it, it, and the ones that we looked at, and you guys had some trouble with you know getting the pitch off the option and that sort of thing. Uh, talk a little bit about your performance offensively this week. Well, um, we were pleased with the way we were able to run the ball with Antonio up the middle. Uh, we felt we could go right at him and get some success. Got a little bit more than we expected with Antonio. He really ran well for us. Um, and when we started going to the outside at the beginning, was pretty good. Um, then they started switching some things up, and that's probably where Austin's inexperience, uh, game and experience at least, of running the option um, came out a little bit with a couple bad pitches. Now, Coach, you mentioned uh, to me after the game that you know you can't blame Austin. He was missing his top receiver in Austin Decker. When you don't have a receiver like Austin Decker out there, you know, he's the quarterback. Um, how does that affect your depth in, in the back, in wide receivers? Well, it, it definitely affected us. Not only is Austin a great receiver, but he's also a great blocker. Um, we had to bring uh, Justin Carwile, who had been playing free safety when Austin Morris was hurt, in to play a lot at, at receiver. And he did a really well, really good job for us, but it did. Um, 
you know, it always the chemistry wasn't there like it had been in the other situation with uh, Nate at quarterback and De Decker at uh, receiver. And, and for those of us who have been following Chantilly, uh, Nate obviously uh, was, was hurt. Uh, he could not play in this game. Uh, he had suffered some head trauma and a concussion. And, and uh, Coach, what is, the situation, what is Nate's situation? Uh, has he been fully cleared to go, and will you start him? Yeah, Nate had an MRI on Monday, and the doctor completely cleared him. He's been practicing this week, and uh, today was the first contact day, so he got hit around a little bit today. And as long as he doesn't have any symptoms tomorrow, he'll be good to go on Saturday. Now, Coach, you also you mentioned Austin Morris, obviously out for three and a half games, had an interception in, in your game last week. When he's in, how does that change your defense? Well, it just gives the guys a lot of confidence. He's a three-year starter. He's, you know, captain back there in the defensive backfield making the calls, and it just the confidence level just rises with him back there uh, for the kids as well as the coaches because you just feel that he can make plays for you. Uh, even when he was playing against uh, the guys with not even being 100%, you just felt comfortable having him out there running around, and the team, I think, really responds well to him being there. Coach, um, especially in this last game, but I know he's been doing it for you all year, on a level of 1 to 10, how big of a beast is Zach Halley? <laughs> a 12. The twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about Zach. He's a big kid, but he—I mean—he got to the quarterback so many times. He's so fast for his uh, for his size. What are, what is his potential, and and is he a guy that's going to be headed to the next level? Uh, well, I think his potential is pretty high. Uh, he has um, gotten better each week, uh, each year that I've coached him, and yeah, he definitely has a chance um, at the next level after his performance on uh, Saturday. We had a lot of coaches come by this week to come and talk to him. <laughs> on the big stage. Yeah, so they, they, they saw him competing against some good competition there, and I guess they felt finally that he was a player, even though he had been doing it all year in the Concord District, mm -hmm. which is pretty good competition. But uh, you know now they've finally given him some respect, and they came to recruit him. Zach Halley also going out for the, the Chargers basketball team. Now, Coach, uh, going off of Zach Halley, it looked like those Verina linemen were, were bigger than your linemen, but Zach Halley leading the charge, obviously, you controlled both sides of the ball on the line. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I think our guys have worked really hard um, to get, get stronger and getting good fundamentals. Um, and, they, and they just came with a focus to, to be disciplined and be, be, be uh, an attacking type line. And, to, and, it was, and it was a challenge to them all week. To, to compete with these guys and to go right at them. Coach, i got to ask you, how sick are you of hearing about the 0-10 season? Uh, you know, it just keeps you, lets you remember where you came from, so I don't mind hearing about it. And, you know, never to get too cocky or too satisfied with where you are because it's easy to get back down to that level. I ha actually have some, some interesting facts about the number 10 for you, Coach. I've, I've been thinking about it. You had two years ago, obviously, the 10 lost season. So, so here we so, you got your 10th win of the year last week over Verina in the state finals by a margin of 10 points, 17 to 7, effectively wiping out any memory of, of your previous 0-10 uh, season. And with the win, the Chargers are headed to the AAA Division State Finals for the first time in 10, 10 years. <laughs> and next week, you will have number 10, Nate Warwick, starting at quarterback. That's how uh, much I'm thinking about your Charger <laughs> team, Coach. Oh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I, I would like one 11 thrown in there, hopefully. Yeah, I, yeah I'd, I'd love to that 10 to change to an 11. <laughs> All right, Coach, uh, we got to ask you now about the future. We've talked a little bit about what you guys have been able to do this year. Let's talk a little bit about what lies ahead. You've got a team in uh, Osborne that's 13-0 and coming into this game. They're an undefeated team, uh, and they are the Division Six Northwest Region champion. Uh, this is a team that has really played some pretty difficult competition as well. What do you expect against Osborne? Well, they're a very talented team. They've obviously at 13 and 0, they've done really well. They've uh, given up an average of 11 points all year per game, and I think they average scoring around 36 points per game. Um, obviously, uh, Brandon Hogan is the uh, the focal point of their team, both offensively and then defensively. He's a real good safety. Um, so, you know, you just got to be focused uh, and disciplined and fundamental um, on our defense and try to do our best to minimize the big plays that Hogan gets. And, uh, 
and and we get an opportunity to tackle them, get get them down. It's going to take more than one guy, though. We're going to have to get everyone there and take everyone, to, you know, take three, four guys to get them down. But just everyone gets there and get to the ball carrier as much as possible. How how big of a plus is it that they moved the game from Hampton up here to Freedom Woodbridge? I mean, it's almost like a home game, really, though, for both teams. So who gets the advantage, though? Well, I mean, if you from from just the uh, location uh, alone, you would. Uh, give Osborne the home advantage they're they're closer or a little bit further away but you know the advantage to both of us is that we don't have to go three and a half hours away uh, we don't have to spend the night down there we get to stay in our own house in our own beds and, and keep uh, some normalcy to your routine which is very beneficial um, I think that in that way we're actually more beneficial than them because they had already made a trip down to Salem last week so they would have been a little bit better prepared for an overnight trip, so we, we probably benefit more than them. Uh, Coach, obviously I believe that if it were still down in Hampton, you would sell out that stadium with your fans. Talk about the Purple Platoon. Oh, they're, they're awesome. They're crazy. They're, <laughs> they're so excited. They're the most loyal high school fans I've ever seen. Uh, I've been fortunate to be at a, a few different schools, and these guys, these guys are the best. Uh, we always talk about the Owen tenure, and the Owen ten year all the way to the tenth game, we still had fans coming, and they've just been itching for us to win, and it's just grown as we won this year. They're great guys. Hey, you see them on the monitor on the, rushing the field after the game. So obviously the, the the fans. I've been covering Chantilly for a while. I mean, for this whole year, I've been to a bunch of games, and no matter what, every single game, those fans are the loudest and the most supportive that I've seen in the in the northern region. And I'm sure those fans are going to be traveling to Freedom Woodbridge to see uh, Chantilly take on Osborne uh, in the state final. Uh, Coach, how tired are you right now? How tired? <laughs> how tired are you right now? Oh, it's been a long year, and uh, <laughs> I got uh, my wife is pregnant with our first child on the way, so oh, wow. congratulations. There's not going to be much rest in the, in the <laughs> next couple of weeks. <laughs> congratulations, Coach, for getting to this point. We'll be there, of course, to to see you guys in the state final. Uh, and hopefully we'll be talking again uh, at this point next week. I hope so. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach. Good luck. See ya. Bye. Coach, uh, excuse me, <laughs> folks, uh, Coach Mike Lolly of the Chantilly Chargers, one of the youngest coaches in the northern region, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, and has really, I think, carried himself quite well this year, very poised. Um, they got up in the northern, uh, excuse me, in, in, in a lot of their games, they were up and, and, and coaching when you're up, especially mm -hmm. in the state semis, when you're up, coaching plays such a big part mm -hmm. and Paul when they went up early um, on Verina in the state semis I looked at you and I said this is where you find out mm -hmm. coaching and I think coach Lally really proved himself uh, in that game I mean on the big stage is where everybody wants to see it obviously he's proved him proven himself mm -hmm. uh, time and again uh, all season helping to really right the ship over at Chantilly well a good coach knows his kids and Lally knows his kids he knows he can trust the ball with Antonio Cross you know, Cross is going to get the yardage you need. He's not going to fumble. And, and when, when he gives the ball across, you know, the, the, the time's running off the clock, the chains are moving, and you don't give Ryan the ball to have a chance to come back into the game. Coach Lolly mentioned some stats about the opposition. We want to get a chance to show the folks at home really who the opposition is. I mean, they're just our next door neighbors here. They're right in Manassas. Osborne High School. Their overall record this year is 13 and 0, undefeated. Chantilly's heard that before. They've taken out some some pretty difficult competition. 28.1 regular season power points. Cedar Run District champion and the Division Six Northwest Region champion. You'll take a look at their schedule here. What they've been able to accomplish uh, this year. They put up some points, Paul. 35 almost a game. Wow. And they're only allowing uh, just over 11 points, as Coach Lolly mentioned. He's obviously been crunching some numbers mm -hmm. as well. But you see they put up 56 points against, uh, well, the school that's hosting their game. And they put up 51 points uh, against Culpeper. So, and you see all W's there, all mostly f over 40 points throughout the season. Mm -hmm. uh, their lowest scoring game uh, was a 14-13 victory over Potomac, uh, a school that we got the chance to talk to Coach uh, Vaughn Lewis from Edison about. Well, there's also something that you can see is um, Chantilly's defense is back. You know they had that lull against Robinson, against Westfield, against Oakton, but with Austin Morris back, with Zach Holly really coming up now, their defense is back. And, and if you can, we have a, have a, actually have a graphic about Chantilly's defense in these last three games, as you see against Oakton, 23-14, a win, a W, 
A defensive points, they scored a touchdown in that game against Westfield, obviously 26 to 21. No defensive points, you know, obviously holding Westfield to 21 points to three touchdowns is a huge deal. Cause the, yeah, I mean, Westfield's an offense that has put up ferocious amounts of points this mm -hmm. year in that Concord district, and, and they're a team with one of the future of a college program, uh -huh. uh, a future quarterback of a college program, and a running back that's been pretty good, Paul. You've got a chance to cover Westfield, but yeah, they held them to 21 points. Look what they did to Verina. And Verina, 17-7, to 7, obviously holding Verina. If you could see, I mean, you saw on, on the clips we've showed, Verina has this athleticism right. that you can just see from, you know, from a mile away. Yeah. And holding them to seven points, Thorpe obviously made a great play to get that touchdown. That, that's something that's pretty impressive. Um, folks, the Fairfax Sports Network, of course, is, is going to be showing this game, mm -hmm. state final, uh, Chantilly uh, versus Osborne. Of course, that will also be available on demand. Uh, in about a second here, we're going to get a chance to talk to uh, Tom Peterson, who is the mayor of Clifton. Uh, it's a special subject, Paul. We'll get back to football, but I want to mm -hmm. jump into this subject real quick. Tom Peterson is the mayor of Clifton, and him and some local baseball folks mm -hmm. are doing something pretty special um, for a guy that I got a chance to write a story about um, early uh, this year. You can read that story at uh, connectionnewspapers.com. Click on Top 100 Athletes. He's number 25 uh, out of the history of the Northern Region. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Jay Franklin. Jay Franklin uh, led Madison to a state title in the late 70s before being drafted number two overall uh, by the Padres. He remains the public school's northern region's uh, highest drafted player of all time wow. on the 1971 draft. I want to give the folks at home, uh, before we get a chance to tell you about Jay and mm -hmm. what's kind of happened with Jay and why these folks are going to be helping him out, uh, he was the number, number two overall draft pick in 1971. Franklin uh, was throwing a 98 mile an hour fastball in high school. Wow. Uh, he had a 29 and one career record. Hmm. 29 and one career high school record. Only allowed 23 walks. Um, 202 batters struck out in 100 innings. He was six foot two, a buck 80. Uh, he led Madison to the four to one victory over George Wythe uh, in the state final. He also led uh, the American Legion post 180 to the state championship in 1970. He made it to the majors. Mm -hmm. was, was one of those guys that was basically drafted too young. Okay. Um, went into the majors, threw out his arm, and it's been, uh, it's been a downhill uh, story for Jay. Mm -hmm. He's um, suffered with alcoholism and other problems and has also suffered from mental illness mm -hmm. for the last 20 years. Uh, he spends time between his mother's one-bedroom apartment um, in Centerville mm -hmm. and also spends time at a group home kind of facility in Reston. Um, I urge you folks to read that story, to get it, the Washington Times also did a story about Jay, to read that story as well, to get some insight uh, as to this local baseball hero. Um, Jay is, one, is still arguably uh, the greatest baseball player ever to come mm -hmm. out of the northern region. Um, I met with him uh, this summer and um, it just, it hasn't looked too good for him for mm -hmm. quite some time. Um, we've got uh, Tom Peterson, the mayor of Clifton, is on the phone with us uh, now. Tom used to coach over at Robinson. Tom, are you there? Yes, I am. How you doing, BJ? Tom, good to have you on. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about what you guys are doing for Jay. But before we do that, if you could kind of give the folks at home some insight as to, uh, as a, a baseball man as you guys are, there's so many baseball men in this region that do so much to help each other more than just wins and losses for our baseball coaches in this region. Tom, tell us a little bit about Jay Franklin, the, the legend of Jay Franklin as a baseball player. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I graduated from Lee High School in 1972, so I've been involved with baseball in this area since uh, the late 1960s. And, uh, you know, Jay Franklin in 1971 pitched against my team. Uh, I had the privilege of, uh, you know, participating in that game, and, and he, you know, he is the best baseball player ever to come out of this area. In 1971, he was the second pick in the Major League Draft mm -hmm. in June. In August, he, he, you know, they rushed him up into the big leagues. Uh, you know, he pitched in the big leagues, leagues, gave up, you know, one of Hank Aaron's home runs. And, and then he hurt his arm. You know, he had a golden future. He hurt his arm. And, and you know, things just haven't been very good for Jay since then. Um, so when we read the article, uh, you know, we, we got together as baseball men and decided we had to do something and that we were capable of doing it. And tell us a little bit about what you are doing 
for Jay. Uh, Jay has suffered through some uh, mental struggles, and, and, and he, is, you know, he is a guy that could use some help uh, from the baseball community. What are you guys doing to help him? Well, uh, one of the first things we did was uh, we contacted a, a, a local dentist, uh, Dr. Chong Lee of uh, Gallerita Dental Aesthetics, and because Jay needs extend, extensive dental work, and uh, Dr. Lee has agreed to, you know, to you know do the procedures that are needed on Jay for, at cost, uh, which is you know a tremendous, tremendous amount of uh, savings to us. And then uh, the baseball guys, we we decided that we're going to hold an annual baseball reunion for anybody that's been involved in baseball over the past 40 years, uh, and we're going to do that at Brian's Grill on Thursday night. And we've had tremendous response on that. I sent out an email to about 10 guys, and it's been forwarded around to everybody. And in the baseball community in this area, uh, it, and it's like one degree of separation. You know, if, if you haven't played with somebody, you've played against them, or you know of them. And uh, so we're, we're real excited about that. We're going to, uh, you know, we're going to raise, raise some money for Jay that way. And then uh, next summer we're going to hold a, a, a golf tournament. There's been a foundation set up for him. That is uh, the the John uh, Franklin uh, Trust Foundation, mm-hmm. and uh, we you know we're going to work to take care of him until he gets back on his feet. Tom, we really appreciate um, you coming on with us and letting the public know that there is something that like that set up for Jay. Of course, on the Connection Newspapers website, they can read that story, and uh, there's also some avenues there as to how they can get in touch with the correct people. Um, Tom, thanks for coming on with us and uh, look forward to seeing you out there with the rest of the baseball community uh, for a good cause. Uh, and We appreciate what you're doing. Well, I, I appreciate uh, everything you all do. It's, it's because of the article that was written on Jay that, uh, that we all got together. So we, we, we thank uh, you all for your support. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Coach. Hey, have a great all night. Right. You too. Um, it's good to see uh-huh. that here's a guy um, that meant so much to so many people. I, you know, I, I got a chance to mm-hmm. sit down with, with him and his mom and his sister, um, and, and, and I had a, a specific quote uh, from his sister, um, Trudy Franklin uh, Cahoon, uh, who said, you know, when he was under the bright lights, mm-hmm. everyone wanted to come around, and, and now, where is everybody? You know, mm-hmm. and, and I think that uh, that was heard. I think that they're rallying. I mm-hmm. think that... Um, uh, all the baseball community, a bunch of good men in this area are going to take care of their own, and it's, and it's good to see that. It's all part of the, the great fraternity of baseball, and, and you can see how high school sports make these bonds. And it, it's great to see that these bonds are paying off for people, for someone who has had such a bright future as Jay Franklin. It's great to see people rallying around him. Speaking of rallying around something and somebody, <laughs> uh, we're expecting the Northern Region fans to rally around their football teams uh, the Fairfax Sports Network's Game of the Week, of course, will be Chantilly uh, versus Osborne. That game will be at Freedom Woodbridge, but you can also catch it on Cox Digital On Demand. You can check out our website for details. That's www.fairfaxsportsnetwork.com. Of course, that's the Division Six state championship. Edison will be in the lower part of the state uh, for their uh, championship mm-hmm. game, taking on, as we mentioned, uh, Phoebus. So... Um, yeah, we expect the Northern Region fans to rally around their teams. Uh, Paul, before we get going here, uh, why will Chantilly win the state championship? I'm putting you on the spot. You're on okay. the hot seat. I, I, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's because they're not scared. They're not scaring anybody. They know, they know what it likes to win, and, and gosh darn it, they like it. They mm-hmm. like to win, and you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not scared, so they shouldn't be scared. Well, Although I'm not putting on pads, but... You know. you know, I hope no one will hold this against me at home, but I'm going to do this for a specific reason. The last time I <laughs> picked against Chantilly, they beat Oakton. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pick against uh, Chantilly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that Osborne is going to win this game big, and I'm doing that for a reason, Coach Lolly. I know you're watching. But I'm doing that for a reason. It's because I love you guys, you Charger fans <laughs> and you Chargers. Um, uh, I want to thank the folks that make this show possible. Of course, we're talking about our underwriters, CC Ice Cream Printing and Quality Care Forward Service Center, uh, the FSN Game of the Week. If you want to catch that this week, digital on demand or the web, check our website for details. Uh, we'll tell you all about how to catch that game. But uh, this week, the Northern Region Championship game will air. Uh, that was Chantilly at Westfield on November 25th. A record-breaking game I hear in terms of people that turned out. Absolutely, that is quite the draw. 
the Centerville-based area teams taking on each other. That's going to run Saturday at 4.30. Hey, we're on the web, www.fairfaxsportsnetwork.com. You can check out uh, bios and photo galleries mm -hmm. and all that fun stuff. CCI Screen Printing, thank you for being our teammate. 703-978-0257. And Quality Care Ford Service Center, servicing all makes and models at 703-383-6299. Folks, I want to thank you for joining us here on the Fairfax Sports Report, here on the Fairfax Sports Network. Tune in next week. We'll tell you who won. We'll also, we're also going to bring you an intense basketball preview. You're going to hear about literally every single team in the northern region. We're going to give you our preseason picks. We're going to tell you players to look out for, rankings. It's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. we've, be we've, crazy. Put in, we've put in the, the legwork, the man hours. We know basketball in the northern region. You guys got to stay tuned next week for that. Come on back next week for another episode of the Fairfax Sports Report here on the Fairfax Sports Network.